Greetings, everybody. And my name is Steve Tubbs. I'm the SVP here at X1 FBO. With me today, I've got Caroline Corrales, who is our VP of Customer Success, and Amanda Sanchez, who is the Director of Customer Support. Uh, the purpose of this video today is to introduce some of the key changes that our customers are going to be seeing with the release of what we call version 2.3. Some of the key changes relate to um, some significant upgrades that we've made to the front end for the arrival departure boards um, and an in, a deeper integration with X1 tracks. Uh, we've also made some front end changes to the request list that are going to have an immediate impact on, on our end users as far as efficiency gains are concerned. Um, and we're also excited to introduce a, a new feature that we're calling X1 I'm Here, which is going to allow your drivers to sort of virtually register um, when they are on site, ready to pick up the passengers or um, and, and or coordinate any transportation needs for your operators that are coming in and out of your FBOs. So some really cool stuff that we've got here today. Um, as we get closer to your go live for uh, for your migration to version 2.3, our operations team will be in contact with you to schedule um, the migration date. Um, so we expect minimal impact on our end users. We just want to be very forward with the changes that you can expect to see. Really excited about this release, um, and we're going to be starting here with the new AD board and the tracks integration um, with Caroline. So Caroline, it's all yours. Go ahead. Hello, welcome. Um, very excited to show you guys what you will be seeing as soon as you log in right after your migration day. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the X1 FBO Today page. So this is going to be the new home page that you're going to see immediately upon logging in. So previously in the past, as soon as you logged into X1, you would have been taken right to the arrival departure board schedule. Uh, what we did was we made this a landing page for a couple reasons. One, to not take up as much loading times. Two, so you can get in and quickly see what's going on in your day. And as you can see here, it's is, is a home page here where you're going to be able to see right away how many arrivals you got going on, how many departures you have going on. You also have a snapshot of what open requests you have going on for that day, and then how many working invoices you have over the last seven days. So just, just a good idea of you know any invoices you have to close up there, as well as pending fueling. So the pending fuelings refuelers button here in the middle, you're going to be able to see you know how many yellow fuelings you guys have that you need to start getting done. Batch payments, you also have some quick shortcuts to quick quote. So, you know, quick quotes a really cool feature that right now you could only access in the request list, but we're now going to give you the option to access that on the home page as well. And then right down here, if you wanted to see what your recent activities were, what were the last features that were used at, at your FBO, you'll be able to see that here down here in recent activities. Um, along with how many refunds and canceled invoices you hear. So that is a snapshot of the X1 FBO today, the new homepage you're going to be seeing. And so now we'll go ahead and take it over to the arrival departure board settings. OK, so once you've logged in over on your main menu, you're going to go to the arrival departure board. It's going to be its own menu now. When you click on arrival departure board, you're going to see a couple of things. You're going to see customized boards titled after whatever your FBO chooses to title them. There's going to be up to five boards that your FBO is going to be able to customize. And then for those users that have permission access, they're going to have access to the AD board settings. So let's go ahead and click on AD board settings so you can see what that looks like. All right, and here it is. When I click on AD board settings, we're now going to be in a settings page where you as FBO, you're going to be able to customize exactly how you want this arrival departure board to look. So we got feedback. We did a lot of interviews with all of our current customers and you know we heard the, the questions. We listened to your answers and what you guys wanted and what you guys needed. And this is the result of that. So you're going to see here, for example, I have a few boards up here. I have a board called arrival slash departure. I have a board called departures. I have a board called arrivals. And then I have an option to create more boards. So we can create whatever board we want with whatever name and title we want. Uh, so to give you an idea, let's go ahead and create a new board. OK, when I create a new board, it's going to tell me I'm now on board number four. And right here, I'll be able to call this board whatever I want to call it. So let's just say I'm going to call this new board for Peter. I'm just using Peter because I'm saying, let's say he's that's my owner's name is Peter. So new board for Peter. I can choose now here in the settings. Do I want this board to appear landscape? Do I want it to appear portrait? Maybe he's using an iPad and the portrait will fit him better. I can do the light mode 
now we have a dark mode. You'll be able to see what that looks like here shortly. Do I want to see just my flights for today or do I want to see my flights for today and tomorrow's date? So a lot of you, a lot of you folks told us that one of the issues you had with the current board was that you couldn't see what was going on tomorrow morning. And that was very important for your later night shifts because that was going to dictate what they were going to do at the end of the night, how they were going to stack the hangar, unstack the hangar, get prepared for tomorrow's arrivals and pull online. So by using the next day, not only will you see today's movements, but towards the end, you're also going to see tomorrow's movements with the date for tomorrow. We also have an option to, do we want to see all flights? Do we want to see just arrivals? Do we want to see just departures? Do we want to see the flights with just fueling? So maybe you want to have a board specific to your fuelers where they can just use it and go off of everything that they need to fuel off of. You can also set the time here. So by default, it's going to be on a 24 hour clock. But if you wanted to just make this maybe a five hour window or a six hour window, maybe for an event or for whatever you have coming up, you're going to have the opportunity to change that. And then this is my favorite part. One of one of the things I, I like the most here is you're going to be able to customize and organize how these columns sit. So over here on my left hand side, I'm going to have all my active columns. So as you can see here, my active columns, that first one is the status. So you'll be able to see the status. Is this a tenancy, the base tenant? Is this a, a network based tenant? Is it an airport based tenant? Then we have the status. We have you know the same thing, airplane pointing up as a departure, airplane pointing down as an arrival. But one thing we added as well here that you're gonna see on the new on the new shapes of the icon is you'll be able to tell right away if they're remaining overnight by looking at that moon. So let me go ahead and rearrange some of these columns so you can see what that looks like. So let's say for me as an FBO, I don't really care where they're coming from or where they're going to. So the from the two, I'm going to move it over, just simple drag and drop. OK, and that takes it away from that menu. And then let's say instead of seeing the status and the tail number, I want to see the status and the ICAO first and then the tail number. So I could just grab my status. I'm sorry, I can just grab my ICAO, switch it over to the second section, and it'll immediately update what those columns look like for me. So you have a lot of opportunities here to, to change around how you need those columns to look. We also added one column here, which we don't uh, currently have in the arrival departure board, which is going to be that current parking. So if you're not already using the current parking on the request inside of X1, now's a good time to start using it. By using the current parking, you guys can go ahead and mark, you know, what you do your ramp log at night or in the morning. If your fuelers or your or your line service can update where that airplane is currently parked, you'll be able to go ahead and see that here when you're looking at the arrival departure board. All right. Now that's a very important piece of information about the current parking, because one of the one of the questions we get asked a lot is, you know, how how do we treat pilots that come up to the front desk and ask us, you know, where's my plane parked? Right now, that still might be a manual process for you. You still might be going into a ramp log, a physical paper ramp log that your line service is updating in the middle of the night, and you have to take a look at that. And it's one piece of paper that someone keeps at the desk. So if someone else needs it, you have to go to another part of the desk to go look for it. So we really hope you'll start using the current parking option. That's, I think it's going to save you a lot of time. And before I go on to talk about these last options here with the arrival departure board setting, one of the things you'll notice here, in addition to these nice new icons, you know, a, a lot of the a lot of the the, the symbols themselves are, are pretty similar. So you still have like the power for the GPU and the gas can looks the same. Um, but now you have you, know, you have a little Starbucks coffee for the Starbucks. <laughs> um, something you'll notice here is you see this bullseye. So if you can see that bullseye. This is the integration with X1 Tracks. So this is, you know, amongst being the new arrival departure board, one of the biggest changes we're making here in 2.3 is the integration with X1 Tracks. So no longer will you have to leave X1 FBO to go to a tracking system, whether that's FlightAware or X1 Tracks, to another page. The tracking is going to happen right here at the screen that you're looking at. All right, so very simple colors here. Blue means it's in route. Yellow means it's scheduled, and if you see a green with a tracking symbol, that means it's arrived. Coming along down the bottom here on the settings, you'll also be able to customize, you know, what kind of notes do you want to show on these arrival departure boards? So, you know, previously in the current versions that you're on now, the notes are just there. You don't have a way to, 
you know, maybe I just want to turn off my CSR notes. Maybe I just want to turn off my arrival departure board notes. Here you'll be able to select what notes you want to see here. We also added a feature which I think is very important is it's called the highlight flights within the current hour. So one of the things that we kept hearing from our users is that it was really hard to see when you're looking at the arrival departure board what's going on at that very moment because your eyes would have to read back and forth and glance through the different times. With this highlight flights within the current hour, you'll be able to walk into your line room, look up at the TV screen or your computer monitor if you're at the front desk, and anything that's happening in that current in that current hour is gonna be highlighted with a light blue um, tint behind that row. So for example, if these two were happening right now, this would be a light blue and this would be a light blue. We also added a section called delayed, um, and this is more for helping you guys stay organized in what's already passed. So, you know, given that you have X1 tracks here, a lot of the trips now are going to be automatically marked as arrived for you. So think about not having to click into each request list to mark it as arrived or mark it as departed. The system's already gonna do that for you with X1 tracks, with the X1 tracks integration that's built into 2.3. So that's one less thing you guys are going to have to be doing. But in addition to that, let's say that it was a flight that for whatever reason, the tracker didn't pick up. If the tracker didn't pick it up and the flight was supposed to come in at 8 a.m. and now it's 10 a.m., this is going to move it into a delayed section. So it'll be removed out of your way, out of your view. It'll keep that arrival departure board clean for you, but it'll put it in a section where you can look back or your dispatchers can look back at it and be like, hmm, why didn't they come? Maybe I need to shoot them a call or get them off the request list. Or yeah, that's right, they're coming in tomorrow. Let me move it for tomorrow. All right, same thing with the arrived departed section. This is something we had in the past, but uh, you know, maybe on your arrival departure board, you don't care to see all the flights that arrived and departed. You want them taken off your list. You really only care about what's about to come in or what's about to leave. So if you have this checked off, that means you'll not see that section or you will see that section. And then, uh, one of the last things we want to show you with the arrival departure board settings is the ability to create a URL for this. So when you create a URL, this is going to allow you to take that URL and display it on any monitor without having to have a user logged in. So currently, as it sits, in order for you to display the arrival departure board on a TV or a monitor, you have to have create a user. Uh, so usually you guys will create like TV room user and then that TV room user has to be logged in. And if that user's session expires or something along those lines, um, everyone will lose the page. Here with this URL, what we're gonna do is create URL. We're gonna say, how long do we want that session to appear for this board? So I can do up to 24 hours. I'm gonna create that URL. That's gonna give me a URL here, which I could then copy and paste. Okay, and it's gonna ask me to add a code. And if you saw before, let me just go back. The code is gonna give it to me here. The security code is 1236. All right, and now I'm looking at the brand new arrival departure board via a created URL, customized board that I just created. You see my board name up here, new board, new board for Peter. And it's showing the columns as I have it with the notes that I wanna be showed and the tracking that I have here. So a lot cleaner, we changed the text, we changed the color, hopefully you guys like it. You also have the light mode option. So let me go and show you guys the light mode option so you can see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. And that's what the light mode looks like. So just to make sure again, you don't have to use the URL option um, once you have that new board created, you have those those custom boards in there. From the main X1 page, when you are on the main menu and you click on Arrival Departure Board, now you're going to see all the different board options you could select from. So you could you can access it just right here from the main menu as well instead of using the URL. So you see New Board Peter. If I click on that, it's going to take me to the tab for that new board that I created, and I can just come back to X1 and continue working as I need to. So this will also allow you to have, you know, you wanna duplicate your screen, have this on a different monitor if you wanted to while you're still working on X1 at the same time. 
Okay, and that sums up our Arrival Departure Board settings and the new Arrival Departure Board. We hope you really like it. We took a lot of feedback into account. We think it looks a lot cleaner. Being able to see that tracking right into the Arrival Departure Board, we think it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, and, you know, whatever questions you guys have as you log into 2.3 for the first time, just let us know. All right, uh, so now that we've looked at the Arrival Departure Board, uh, we're going to have Amanda Sanchez take you to the request list, the refreshed updated version of the request list. So I'll hand it off to Amanda and what you're looking at at the screen is that new version there. Hi X1 family, let's start from left to right. Tenancy and flight summary columns are incorporated into the request list. This addition will help CSRs identify transients, base and airport tenants while also providing a quick glance at what the aircraft is doing based on the fly status icons. Service icons are now grouped when there are multiple requests for the same service, indicating number of services requested. Icon color code status will remain pending until all services are completed. X1 is now fully integrated with X1 tracks. If your location has an X1 Tracks subscription, the system now recognizes and tracks tail numbers automatically. Fly status will update on this page, keeping the standard color codes. Yellow for flight to schedule, blue for in route, and green for those that have landed or departed. There is also the ability to stop tracking from the Actions menu, and as you see, the Actions buttons are replaced with a full drop-down menu. We included a CSR No section with notification, so you don't miss a thing. One of the most exciting features to me is that the request payment status is interactive, allowing you to create transactions from here and see what services are charged per invoice. In addition, the icon for working and ready status invoices will be a blue dollar sign, and once paid, it'll turn into a green dollar sign. Inside the request, we automated the flight summary to update automatically when the trip date and time are saved. We also added a new setting in the FBO profile so you can determine quick turn and short stay trip length. Many thanks for taking the time to review the new request list feature with us. We will love to hear how these changes will optimize your operation and make your days easier. Also, hey, this is Caroline. You just finished seeing the new version of the request board from Amanda. And what we're going to do now is take you over a brief overview of the introduction of X1 I am here. So, so you guys know this is going to be an add on to your current uh, X1 FBO subscription. And let me show you why we added this here. So over on your main menu, you're going to see an option called I am here. This is specifically for your vendors, your outside vendors. So the idea is to have uh, some type of kiosk in your lobby, uh, whether it's a small X1 media device or a big standing kiosk. You're going to be displaying this QR code in your lobby and think about a driver coming into your lobby, grabbing his or her phone, scanning this QR code, it's going to take them over to this registration portal where they're going to be able to register who they're here for. Uh, so you have a driver coming in instead of walking up to the front desk, taking attention and time away from your front desk that needs to be focused on customer service. They're going to be able to come right over to that kiosk, scan this QR code. They're going to be able to register who they're there for. I'm here to pick up number 123 Echo Bravo. This is the passenger I'm here to pick up. This is my phone number. What that's going to do is it's going to display that information to the I'm here portal, which your users will have access to from the front desk or from dispatch. So think about any time an airplane arrives. Uh, hey, where's the driver? Where's the driver? Can someone call the driver? You're going to be able to see it right here. Not only that, with these trips being linked to the request and the tracking system, the system is going to know when that plane is 10 minutes out and it's going to track it. And when that plane is 10, 15 minutes out, it's going to send a message to that driver. Hey, that plane is 10, 15 minutes out. Might want to start pulling up to the gate. So we made this as a, as a point for your front desk and your front lobby uh, to keep taking that time from your CSRs at the front desk and making it more centralized so that everybody can see 
all the drivers and vendors that are checked in. Uh, so this is what it looks like. If you have any questions about uh, you know, how to get on here, how you can add it, if you wanna see what it looks like in, a, in another recording or in another demo, we'd be happy to share that information with you. And we hope you really like it. Okay, that wraps today's uh, 2.3 release overview. I uh, certainly hope you found this helpful. Really wanna underscore what Caroline had put out a couple times during the discussion that this was built based on our customer feedback. So our customers are driving our development trajectory for our system, so keep the feedback coming. If you need any assistance with any of the new features or anything in general, please give us a call. As you know, we're standing by. You can get us by phone, email, or the chat icon within the application. We're more than happy to hear from you. Again, as Caroline had indicated, if you have any uh, questions about the I'm Here application or you want to have that added to your subscription, just give us a call and we'll be sure to put you in touch with the right uh, personnel. Anyways, thanks again. Have a great day.